Well, welcome back to the Model 3 Man channel. And today I'm going to be doing an episode that will really make your life easier. I think all of us have been super impressed by the way that Elon has rolled out the Sentry mode in our Model 3s. Sentry mode across all cars, but since I own the Model 3, this pertains to the Model 3. Sentry mode started off with just the front camera recording anything that might happen. And then it was the front camera and the side cameras. And in a recent upgrade, we got the front camera, side cameras, and the rear camera, all of which would record any activity around your car, close to your car, particularly if that activity were human beings encroaching on your Model 3's space. Well, the Sentry mode, as we know it, is innovative, pretty cool. That big, baleful red eye that glows on the screen which is enough to frighten away most people. One thing that Sentry Mode is not is easy to use. So first of all, you've got to format your memory card or your flash drive in exactly the right format type. You've got to name the folder correctly. We've done that in a previous episode, so I won't repeat it here. But let's say you've got your flash drive, it's in the car, and it's recording all of the Sentry events, as well as just regular driving. It's recording there as well. So what's difficult about it the difficulty isn't getting to see all of the recorded events i know that there is a special wireless flash drive which can beam the content to your phone it's awkward it's not what we would call the most user-friendly way of doing it and it also obviously is a little slow just recently i got a tweet from somebody that said to me we'd love you to try out this Sentry Viewer software. Sentry Viewer, and here's what it does. It allows you to connect your drive, flash drive, uh, memory stick, SSD, to your Mac computer, which could be a MacBook, portable MacBook. Plug it in, download the software from the App Store, install it on your Mac, and now when you open it, it asks you to point to the Tesla Cam folder, which as we know, is the location where all events, Sentry events, regular driving, saved video, is stored in the Tesla Cam folder. Below that folder are three subfolders. One of them is named Sentry or Sentry Mode. It said select Tesla Cam folder, choose open, Sentry clips rather than recent clips. We point it to the Tesla Cam. And then we simply pick a date. So I'm going to browse through to November the 11th. And uh, all right, this is a good one. I was at Ikea, parked in the underground parking. There is a mother with a baby. She walks up, opens her car door, and um, walks back for her baby. But then, as she starts to push the baby to the car, she notices something in my car. And the camera catches her, staring balefully at the red sentry eye on the computer screen. A bit of a disconcerting thing to see, but that's what you want people to do. Turn around, walk away. Don't come near my car. There's the husband, I'm thinking. And uh, you notice how that in the left-hand window, let's just go back a little bit here. So this is the right side of the car looking rearwards and they move in there's a minute or two while they're obstructed and then they appear in the left camera but let's go back again you can see them in the rear camera up the top let's take a look at this and, and show you each of the windows the top left is the front camera the dash cam that is the rear camera and my rear cam is completely dirty you can see that it's awful what you can notice is that the rear camera is a much more fisheye version of reality. These two here are pretty accurate. There's very little distortion on the left rear and right rear cameras. The rear camera, of necessity, has to be a much more global view, and therefore the fisheye lens will include a wider angle. The front is just about straight, about dead on. I can pause at any time. I can go down here and change the playback speed. Let's go at one quarter speed. <laughs> Quite eerie that we can snoop on passers-by like this. I've blurred out her face, obviously, but it's perfectly clear 
to me. And there she goes. You can, of course, speed things up, and I'm gonna have two times speed. And there you can see things look a lot brisker. You don't have to wait around so long. And um, she doesn't appear to spend as much time peering at the big red eye. Let's put her back on one speed and then go back to normal screen view. So let's go and look at the menu options just for a moment. Preferences, not much to show there. Uh, date format, you can set the date however you'd like. Um, hide rear license plate. File, export. Okay, let's, let's pick a, a clip here. Select it by putting a check mark in the box. When I choose file, export, there we go, and it asks me where I want to put them. Resolution is a choice that you can make, so we can look at that and um, pick any of these popular resolutions. And remember that 3840 is all four of the windows grouped together. And then you're ready and you click Save, and uh, it begins to export, and you can see not that quick, but um, it's exporting four different video streams, combining them into one and creating a new file. It's going to take a certain amount of time. Uh, this is the way it records your clips. Century Viewer is the preface up front, and then it's got the date and month, it's got the exact time in 24 hour time notation, and then um, dot .mov at the end. Uh, that's basically it. So that's the standard format it uses to record when you ask it to export for you. Why don't we choose recent clips? Uh, January 28, well that's yesterday. All right, so that was me on my way to lecture in my school last night. And there we go, Model 3, right in front of me. the on-ramp and you can see we're about to merge onto the freeway that's the rear camera my rear view camera is not much cleaner now you will notice something that the exposure on the rear cam is a lot brighter than the side cams the rear one always just seems to be brighter and the one at the front well mostly uh, it seems to be darker but that's good because then it doesn't overexpose anything in front of you and when headlights shine into it, it's got its exposure set quite low. That means we pretty much will be able to see the detail of what's in the front panel there. One or two more items on the menu here uh, under playback. So this is a good one. Let me just get back out of here again, make this a little smaller. Here's the event that we're looking at. Me entering the freeway, heading toward my school. I'm going to put a little check mark there. And if I go up to the playback menu, I can ask it to reveal this current collection of four video streams in a finder window. So there it is. That these are the four videos that it's showing me in this big window on the right. And it's, it will be combining these four into one if I choose to export. Now, of course, you can always make these objects bigger by going control plus and control minus will make them smaller but it will always highlight the four videos that are currently in your screen over here there's very little in the menu so uh, don't worry about it browsing the different categories here saved clips this will typically give you the ones that you saved that you pressed on the icon and downloaded uh, to your to your card once again it's pretty clear I mean if you look at it I know there's rain all over the place and rain gets on the cameras but nevertheless it's still giving us quite a good view so here's a video that shows me backing into the tent in which Red Dragon lives there's the poor old leaf that just has to sit out in the cold and the rain, the snow and the bugs and the leaves, while Red Dragon lives inside this nice sheltered environment. So front camera, the neighbor's fence. Here's the tent, 
And there's the rear one. Don't back up too far because otherwise you hit that. Now let's go back to saved clips. That's a better shot during the daytime. Rear camera always seems to be dirtier. Side cameras seem to stay pretty clean, as does the front camera, thanks to the wipers. You often get uh, one or two of the video streams start off just green in color. It's like there's a green filter on top of them, and then suddenly it'll clear. I don't know what that is. It's some kind of uh, video artifact. I'm really not sure what it is. And sometimes when you play it again a second time, uh, well, that one's not clearing, but the bottom right has cleared. Anyone know the answer to that? Please put it in the comments below. Let's go back. Let's go back some more. And now they play. But you can see that both of those that were green are very corrupted, very pixelated, very broken up, and maybe it automatically applies the green. And suddenly there, that one cleared, and that one cleared. The system is not perfect yet, but I can tell you that it really is a wonderful benefit to be able to go back to something, look at a time code, and see exactly who did what to your vehicle. Sentry Viewer and you're using a Mac so we head for the App Store icon we get into the search bar we type Sentry Viewer hit the enter bar and that's it there it is there mine says open because I've downloaded it it's very very reasonably priced and I'll tell you this that it honestly makes such a difference when you can see all four videos together let's zoom in on this over here all four videos stream simultaneously it's been well designed it works smoothly I've got no issues with it it makes it tremendously easy what are the downsides well none at all the only thing is of course we do still have to take the flash drive or the memory card out of the car, bring it to your Mac. If you have a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air, you can sit in the car, connect it up, have a look through, save the ones you want, stick the SSD drive or the flash drive right back into the USB port of the Model 3. I didn't find any bugs, it worked very smoothly. It exported to .mov files. I was able to use that and what you're seeing in this review comes from saved files. So, um, yeah, I love it. Obviously, there's room for improvement. I would love to have Tesla incorporate the ability to look at a connected flash drive to automatically display on your big 15-inch screen those four feeds and for you to pick a date, just like Sentry Viewer, but for them to incorporate it in the Tesla operating system. Will it happen? I don't know, but Elon has a habit of responding to repeated requests that happen over time. He's got a habit of sneaking it in and then just blowing away everybody else that's been trying to do it. That would be sad. I wouldn't like to see that, but I would like Tesla to make the attempt to allow for easy viewing of Sentra and camera events from within the car without having to go and disconnect your drive, take it inside, plug it back in again, just to work from the car. So that's my review for today. If this has been a particular complaint of yours, go download that app now and you will enjoy it. I'm sure you'll enjoy it as much as I have. Thanks for supporting the channel. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Feel free to use my referral code to give yourself a lot of free supercharging when you buy your new Tesla. And with that, Thank you again for watching. Thank you again for supporting the channel. I look forward to seeing you again in the next episode.